It's a complete and utter failure. An insipid and pathetic Essendon side are handed the fifth biggest loss in the club's history. This is the sash. Definitely not the official podcast of the Essendon Football Club. I am your host, Rob, here with you on a Monday. And joining me is Mert and Joel. Hello, Mert. Hey, mate. Insipid's the word, isn't it? Mm. Fucking disgraceful, to be honest. <laughs> Straight off the top. There you go. There's a fucking swearing warning. Yeah. 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 Lots, lots Absolute of. Absolute disgrace. Lots of swearing today, everyone. So, um, kids in cars, turn it off. Maybe save it for another time. But mm. we'll learn some new words, kids. Yeah. Learn some new words. Yeah. You're going to need them. <laughs> if you're listening to this and you go for the bombers, you're going to need them. Yeah. How are you going, Joel? Oh, man. That was. I was trying to stack rank it yesterday in terms of like the worst I've ever felt as an Essendon supporter and it's pretty high up there, I reckon. This is a new low point for me. A new low? This is a new low. There, yeah. we, previously, we've gone from, you know, weakness to weakness and mm. low point to low point, but never have we been fighting, supposedly fighting for a final spot and been absolutely belted to within an inch of our lives by another mediocre side. Mm. Yeah, I mean, ev- every year we get belted by a not particularly good side. It was Port last year. Mm. It was Bulldogs I think the before. Dogs the year before yeah. or two years before that, before COVID. Mm. Um, it, it always happens, and I think it's just a reflection of the leadership at the club. It's a reflection of the culture at the club, the mentality at the club, and yeah, just just the perennial weakness of our of our insipid club, mm. our insipid players are. Absolutely insipid administration. <laughs> <laughs> it is the word of the day. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, biggest loss since round 10, 2006 against Adelaide. We lost by 138. This game, mm. we lost by 126. Mm. Like, it's the kind of loss that you have before a coach is sacked, but we've got a, obviously a fresh sack coach, him. so I don't think they're going to sack him. But sack him. That's, that's the, like... That's what usually happens. Yeah. This happens and then they're like, oh, yeah. oh, he's, his job is up. Absolutely convinced yep. that he's been planted by the AFL <laughs> to fuck us over even more <laughs> and to fuck Herdy over. <laughs> oh, uh, man. Adam Sims might be available. Uh, <laughs> he's got a better record at the moment, I reckon. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, uh, fuck, if someone had told Dave Barham that Dimmer was available, he might have caught the sack about <laughs> four weeks ago. Mm. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Oh, um. Yeah, it's hard to know where to start with this. Yeah. Um, like we can obviously rant and rave and we're all pretty upset. And, will. and yeah. You know, we'll continue to swear and be irate and be upset by it all. Um, like I felt throughout the year that this sort of stuff was behind us. Mm. Clearly I was wrong mm. in thinking that. And I think that is why I think a lot of us are hurt, is that we probably all believed at times this year, even though that we weren't at the very top end of this competition, but We've yeah. kind of grown past these problems, but clearly we haven't. No. I was trying, like when I was trying to be positive last week, you know, I was like, okay, well, we beat North and we beat West Coast and, you know, Old, Old Essendon might have lost those games, but no, no, Old Essendon's <laughs> still well and truly here. Yeah, we, we are the same Old Essendon. Yeah, there's, there's, this is existing, current Essendon. Mm. Yeah. It's funny you say that because I'm just looking at my chat with Kingo and, you know, before the game last week, Kingo had said he'd thought we'd actually get up and my response was, personally, I think interstate plus Dons plus post halfway through the season equals savagely belted. (laughs) And thank you, Essendon, for Mm. proving me right again. Mm. You shouldn't be able to read a team like that. Uh, as much as you can with the Dons. Mm. I just I don't buy into any of this like, oh, they're really gassed, you know, it's been a long season. It's like, how are we any different to any of the other 17 clubs that are out there? Like, yeah. what, what gives us the excuse to be able to say that we're gassed? And, and that, that's why it's such a cultural thing and just it, it has me absolutely done with the club because it's not the first time this has happened. Mm. This happens consistently. This happens every single year. Like, this yeah. has happened – basically every year since Sheedy left, mm. except for when we had Herdy at the helm. <laughs> yes. Literally. We all know what played, played Hawthorne in round 18, yeah. 1v2 on the ladder. We mm. were one on the ladder. Mm. Round 18. Yeah. Oh, well. What could have been? <sighs> mm. What could have been? Um, has this result taken away any shine of anything good that we've done this season? Because let's we have done some good yes. things this year, but has this just killed all of that for yes. you, Matt? Yeah, Absolutely. 
hundred percent. It's a step backwards. We've had an easier draw, a much easier draw than we did last year. It's a massive step backwards, mm. and it shows nothing's changed. What about you, think, Joel? I feel like it's kind of hard to answer that question right now, but I think at the end of the year, I will look back and kind of feel like, all right, like I'm excited to see 2024. Hobbsy and Mardo and Perko and all that sort of stuff. So I feel oh, like... Mate, I won't get a game. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, maybe, maybe they wouldn't get a game somewhere else, but they'll get a game for us. Um, no, yeah, look, field, look maybe, maybe I don't know, maybe we've still done a, a bit better than last year, but it's hard. It's very hard to say. Yeah, because like I thought the Giants would win. I expected us to go up there and lose, but I didn't expect this. You know, and like not nut fashion. And at quarter time, when we were down by, I think thirty five points or something, I was like, "All right, game's over." But you know, they'll probably pick up the speed in the second quarter, and then you know, it might just kind of stay at this yeah. level. And we didn't fire a shot; nothing happened. Mm. And like, obviously, this reflects a lot of the coaches, and we'll get to them. But I think this really reflects on some of the on field leaders who, oh, yeah. big time, who, who've That's got, who've, and this is this is the real big first blemish for Merritt as a captain because he's had a really good year, I think, up until this point. Mm. He's had a lot of things right, and we've yeah. really liked the way he's gone about it. But yeah. this is where you've got to be able to motivate guys to get up and around you. And him, McGrath, and other guys who are in the leadership group kind of haven't done it. Um, there were times in that game where someone would make a mistake, and there was a lot of them, especially particularly turnovers. I can't remember who it was, but it was one. It was might have been Durham or May Perkins. Was on the ground. They just f- fucked something up, and Joe was to kick the goal. And I and McGrath came over and like picked him up and was like, "It's okay, mate." But I'm like, "It's good that you're comforting them. You also got to be like, hey, like, yeah, come on, you're not doing that again. No, but yeah, they, yeah, that's the thing. They believe it's okay. They all mm. believe that it's okay. Yeah. If you listen, if you listen to Andrew McGrath's post game interview in the rooms and he just spits out the same old bullshit that they've been spitting out to us for the last 10 years. Mm. And it's, you know, we're, we're hurting. We understand the supporters are are hurting, but, but we're hurting with you and we know it's not good enough. It's like, (laughs) mate, you have no fucking idea what's going on in my head at the moment. Like you clearly, nothing good. (laughs) You you clearly have no fucking idea. Yeah. And he starts talking, worst of all, he starts talking, at the end of his interview about the journey that they're on as a collective group. It's like, mate, fuck your journey, okay? You're absolutely nowhere, just Mm. like the rest of the team. Mm. Some of his efforts in defense and just letting players cruise past him to kick goals. I said on Saturday when I was watching this shit in the second quarter, when someone says jogging, I think of Anchorman, Mm. jogging. 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 Yep. I think of Andrew McGrath. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> yeah, and I think of Dyson Heppel. Yeah, and that was fucking everywhere on Saturday, mm. and it's been everywhere for the second half of the year. Mm. Like I, I don't understand how someone, how a professional athlete, can be so unfit that they are constantly jogging. Mm. This is yeah. So this is one of the things that I find it really, really hard to reconcile with is just like a, even nothing to do with anyone else, but just the pride in your own performance. Like that's yeah. just you're if you know you're you're getting belted by that much. Like how could you not go belt someone or go smash someone in the back and attack or just do something where like yeah. you just, you know, show some anger and show some fight and show some spirit. And it's just like again and again and again, someone runs past you or mm. you're happy to run by for a handball. But then as soon as it doesn't go your way, you let players jog past you. It's just like some iota of like pride in your own yep. personal performance. It doesn't have to do with everything else. Mm. It's just strange. I think if we were serious as a club and if Brad Scott was serious as a coach and we wanted to actually affect some change, we'd set a, set about being really aggressive in this trade period mm. and we'd trade someone like Andrew McGrath. I'm not joking there. And that's yeah. not me being reactionary and emotional, even though I am. Mm. It's dead set serious because I'm sick of seeing teams around us and below us surpass us within a season. And I've mm. seen Hawthorne do that now. Mm. Yeah. Like Hawthorne are playing much better football than we are. They'll belt us next year, no doubt. Mm. Yeah, I mean, look, Hawthorne have been horrific for a lot of this season, and they have they have had a, a good. They final have, month. but they they were aggressive in the trade period, and they made a lot of calls mm. that were questioned early yeah. on. No, you're and right. Look at the footy they're playing. Look at the opportunities they gave to their youth. And Brad Scott said all this stuff about mm. the future and opportunities and all that shit, but it means nothing because yeah. the youth are not getting opportunities. Yeah. Well, He's dropping Nick Bryan mm. every week. He's dropping Baldwin every week. Mm. Like. These kids aren't getting opportunities. They're playing behind these spuds who are older than them. Yeah. It's look, it'll be telling 
what we do in this off-season window because mm. it will be Brad's first mm. one there. And um, there is going to be a bit of change in the footy department at least. Josh Marnie's going. Um, like Brad, Brad said himself, and it was one of the good things I got out of his press conferences that he goes uh, – like, let's just make this crystal clear about how much work we need to do in aspects of our game, all aspects of our list, and all aspects of our footy department. Yep. Um, I don't need to repeat myself. There is enough evidence there today. Yeah, so yeah. that that for me is good to go, all right, things are going to change. And I think at least what we've seen post, you know, Bar and Revolution yep. is that things are going to change. Like, Josh Marnie is one of Xavier Campbell's boys. He's, if, got, he's if gone Dodoro's now. If Dodoro's there at the end of this preseason, <laughs> it's – Nothing will ever fucking change. <laughs> yeah. Like if you if you just look up the look at the makeup of our list currently, and if you look at the you look at our players on Saturday, for instance, we've got one player who we drafted in the early 2010s, mm. and that's Dyson Heppel. Yeah, there's no one else. Mm. Yeah, well, it's all turned over. It's all turned exactly. over. Exactly. Then, then, then the it. next is Langford, Laverty, Merritt mm. kind of era. Yeah, like there's a massive gap there, mm. and that goes down to one. The fact that we've pl- picked dog shit players, we were also, we, we were also pushed out of the draft for a couple of years. Mm. Remember too? Yeah, I understand that, but we're talking before that. I'm mm. talking like basically 2009 mm. on to 2015. Mm. Nothing, yeah. like absolutely zero, <laughs> and the and the the inability to actually develop any players in that time mm. has absolutely killed us. Yeah, yeah. and that's and you, look, we. We do rant and rave about Dodora, but he's he's not responsible for our development. No, unfortunately, our, our like if you look at you know two of the best players who we took in that era that are playing AFL don't play for our team anymore. Like Melksham and Hibbard play for the D's. Mm. Um, you know, like they're the guys who are still kicking around from that era. Yeah, it's it's it, it is strange, isn't it? And um, but it's just like. We didn't it pick, it, we it didn't. makes me think, like, with the people that we've got now as well, that, like, you know, obviously Rid- Ridley's a superstar, but then I'm looking at Perkins and I'm, I'm looking at, like, players like that and I'm like, are they as good as I think they are or are he's, they just so, they, they're better because we know Essendon to be shit and maybe they're not actually so that good? He's so fumbly, Perkins. Like, I can't mm. – I, I, just every time he got near the ball and he's, he's good overhead, like, mm. credit where credit's due, but when the ball's below his knees, he just second grabs almost every time. Mm. And I think he could be – like an absolute superstar in the future. But, God, it's not going to be in the midfield if you can't pick the ball up. Get yep. Caldwell in there and get Hobbs in there and leave him in there. Mm. And trade Parrish. <laughs> and <Yeah>. also, <laughs> just on just on my point. I'll with, let you go. You're on a roll. Yeah. yeah. I am, Forget but, the run sheet. <laughs> fuck the run sheet. <laughs> <laughs> That's another thing, actually. Yeah, the fucking run sheet. Fucking <laughs> run sheet. <laughs> D- Dodoro, in between basically picking up, we'll, we'll talk top picks. Mm. In between picking up um, Zach Reid, the next prior to that, the next last most recent key defender that he got was Michael Hurley. Yeah, that's a fucking disgrace. No wonder we got no fucking key backs. It's a long time. I'll chuck in BZT is like a late pick in there. Carlisle, who is actually I think drafted as a forward. Yeah, but that's he's he's the only exception to it. Like in that, that's a. What twelve year period? Mm. We love a front to back switch, definitely. That look, this it's a might disgrace. this might be a good time for me to share, tell you guys a little story. So this, I can't remember if I've told this on the podcast before. I don't think I have, but anyway, I don't know why we can't get players on. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, we'll see. We'll we'll see what happens to the end of the year. Um, so twenty twenty. 2020 grand final, night grand final, um, Richmond beat Geelong. We're all in lockdown here in Melbourne. I watched that game with my housemates. Um, and that night, um, like it was a Saturday night, we were in lockdown. I had a fair bit to drink and I was hanging out with my housemate, Nick, who he goes to Melbourne, but he's not really a footy fan. He's a skater. He's into skating, but he'll watch the footy. And we were sitting there having beers and he's like, oh, so how far away do you think Essendon is from my contending? And I sat there and I thought about Essendon's list and like Curly had just retired. Mm. Hook was about to retire. And I said to him, I was like, Nick, I got really emotional. I think I started crying. I was like, man, I don't see this team being good for five years. There's nothing here. Like this is before we'd brought Peter in and we'd gone to the draft and I literally sit there and go, man, I don't see any talent right now. That was 2020. Three years are on, we've brought in some young guys and I'm excited about it. But yep. I got real, real dark in that that moment and watching that game reminded me of that, of me, me saying to myself, we're not going to be good for a while. And I think this is just still a reminder that the this cycle that we're on at the moment and you know, ideally – New depths of darkness, man. Yeah, new depths of darkness. But the the new cycle that we're on, you know, with Brad and Barb mm. and this new change, this is the start of that cycle. 
but there is just this weight of 20 years upon us, which makes it yeah. makes me hard to be rational about the fact going, no, 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 like the new coach, new everything, we're, we're turning it over and we're hoping to see a lot of change in this off-season. It's a massive mm. off-season of the club. These are, these are those off-seasons that define a club and go, yep, you're on the right path or you're going to go back down the road for the next five years. Um, but it's hard. It's hard to be rational when we carry this burden. Yeah, yeah well, fuck rationality. Like fucking Dodoro picked Parrish and Francis over Kerno and Mackay. Yeah, I mean <laughs> Francis. Francis is the one in in that one. Like Parrish is you know sucks. <laughs> um, yeah, it's tough. But then stuff like this happens. That's the thing, though. Like, like you feel better and you feel good, and then something like this happens, and you're like. You know, a loss like this, you don't have losses like that unless it still, uh, unless like excuses bleeds through every inch of your club. This sort of mm, thing doesn't yeah. happen when it, when the finals is on the line, and you know you you're trying to prove a point to your hundred thousand members or how many members we've got. Like this doesn't happen at that sort of level. Mm. So like, it just makes me think like, well, are we so polluted that like it's not going to get better? Or like, well, I don't know what the change has to be. I, I just think, to be honest, I think there's still too much. As much as I do, I love what Barham's done. I love what he did last year. It was really ballsy. I think there's more to go. I mm. think there's heaps more to go. Like, mm. we've still got to, we've still got to, as much as we love Sheeds, like, at this stage, he's a drunken, rambling idiot. And he gets involved just to play politics and get in the media like he did a couple of weeks ago. Oh, what was that? Yeah. And that's, that's his only role. Like, he, he doesn't actually play any active role on the board. He just stir shit yeah I, that's the old Essendon yeah and it's that's the thing we need to continue continue where we started last year and like I you know like we know Marnie's Marnie's out so we'll get someone new in mm -hmm. um and there's probably like a white walker Marnie <laughs> okay there's probably some other there's probably some other <laughs> uh other yeah. changes that need to happen as well like on field and off field but this is it this is going to be a really defining off season for Essendon yep and we might see I, – I, I expect to see a lot of change on field and off field, but this is the sort of stuff that sets you up for success or failure. And mm. I'm hoping we act and, you know, hearing what Brad said after the game and reading that and me going, okay, there's going to be some change. Yep. Um, we expect to see it. We know there's going to be a lot of list change um, and it needs to happen, um, but we'll see what happens there. Yeah, I don't know if it's any of it's going to be good change, Rob. I have no – Absolutely no faith in case you haven't realized that already. Right, really? I thought you were positive. <laughs> yeah. I don't have any faith in given Scott's selection this year, I don't have any faith that he's going to make the right call as far as list changes. Well, this was this was gonna be my next thing to bring up was the selection for this game. And he he like he said, Oh, you know, amongst everything, we got the selection wrong. Yep. And the thing that I found really strange coming this game, and I spoke about it last Thursday's pod was how like in two minds the selection was because if you're having a serious tilt at finals and mm -hmm. you're dead set dead set about it, you play Will Setterfield. You yeah. play some of the other more experienced guys yep. who have played in the VFL and you bring them in um, ahead of like a love Elijah Sardis. He'll, he might be a great player one day, but you play him over that kid if you're actually serious about it. Yep. But then- all right, we're playing these kids, but then we are making some decisions. Like we're playing Paco as the sub, who's clearly not 100% fit. Yeah, We should have learned from Dylan Shield that you don't play guys like, oh, you can, oh, we think he might be good for 80% game time. Playing the VFL then. Yeah, yeah. Pa Paco's yeah. not the kind of player you play when he's no. unfit, but not, he's but, underdone. But I don't think any player is. Yeah. Learn the lesson. Like I'd rather, I'd rather you play a debutant as the sub, mm. then play someone underdone in this game. Yeah, well, and that, but that's also it, Rob, is yeah. that it's not like we're completely devoid of any options mm. in the toes. Like like you say, like we've got Will Setterfield just sitting there ready to go and it showed from his game. Yeah. yeah. Today he's ready to go. He's yeah. best on ground. And then we've got, you know, a tipper who's been – Play Snelling. Ready, willing and able. He's, a, he's available. He's fit. Yeah. yeah. He's, you know, like – Rather play tipper. No, but I know – but under, yeah. that's, Just someone it, else. It, it yeah. doesn't matter, like, who the person is. It's like that you spend all year talking about how you're only going to play guys who are 100%, but then yeah. in two different cases with high-profile guys who are clearly yeah. on big money and probably have clauses in their contract yep. that say, hey, I have to play if I'm fit. You bring him in, and yeah, and the, but that's that's the, that's a huge issue, and that's a huge question mark, as you know. For me, is just selection integrity because mm. it's so inconsistent, and you just can't like. And I know he continues to do this, but you can't look straight down the camera and tell us honestly 
that the same standards are applying to the same players or to, sorry, to different players mm. and that everyone has the same kind of approach applied to them and the same kind of selection criteria because mm. it's just not the case. Clearly not. And mm. it, it just it, it doesn't make sense how they can do that one, you know, even just dropping Baldwin after one game like they did at the start yeah. of the year, two games in, performs well, drop him. Mm. Why, is, why is he not afforded the same leniency as – you know, someone else in the team who just yep. week in, week out. Well. Yeah. Like like so many of them have been. Yeah. Yeah. When when I was really excited by Brad Scott's appointment, um, particularly the fact that he'd spent th- that time at the AFL, like assessing, you know, AF- assessing the game and determining what the trends of the game were and looking at. Mm-hmm. I was like, that's such an awesome perspective for a coach to be able to have, mm-hmm. like how studious he's been of football in general. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But then – I didn't actually – I don't think I realised or I didn't know until people started speaking about it this year that he has a history of sticking with people and just mm. doing that. But it's become really, really clear that that's yeah. the case and that's a fatal flaw almost. I, I agree and I think it's been shown up this year with Essendon because we, we just do have guys who – like a lot of guys who, you know, might be senior players and everything. Mm. But if you've got a coach who's – overly willing to stick with the senior player over mm. a junior player, then it really shows up. Mm. And like, and I mean, it's not across the board because he's, he hasn't played Tipper since round one and Tipper has been in my eyes, very deserving of actually getting a recall. Mm. Certainly Maybe. over some yeah. of the guys that he's brought back in over him, but you know, yeah, like, I mean, the persistence with Wiedemann at the start of the year when he wasn't playing good footy. And I actually, like you look at the footy he's been playing in the VFL I reckon getting him in the VFL early and getting the ball in his hands would have mm. done him like just yeah. wonders. Yeah. It would have been so good for him. Yeah. That's, that's what they thought of yeah. Melbourne at least. It didn't, <laughs> didn't work. Well, he's, he's doing, and he's done the same with Jake Kelly and well, trialing him in all positions. But, yeah. but, but I think that's the biggest example because clearly, he, clearly, this is a guy who is clearly getting squeezed out of the back line because there are other options there that are going to provide more in the long term. And we're just, he's just trying to find a way to play him in the team. Yeah. If you can't, if you can't put him in his yeah. ideal position and you're pushing, you know, Nick Martin off a wing to get him in, you're yeah. throwing him in the ball like you just but, but that's it. It's you're a, throwing shit at a wall, see what sticks. You've got to just yeah, it's to the on. it's to the detriment of much better players in those positions. And mm. like even a Nick Cox who really didn't earn his position coming back in, he'd played three or four games in the VFL and hadn't really set the world on fire. I'm you know, I'm I still believe he's got a bit of something in Coxie, and I still want to see him, you know at least persisted with, but perhaps not in the ones right now because Mm. he didn't earn those games when he got moved into defence. He did not earn those games over Kane Baldwin, whom be best on in the VFL alongside Nick Bryan for the last 10 weeks. Mm. And when you've got those players and then you're willing to, you know, Coxie, utility, who has no utility whatsoever. <laughs> like, and you move him around and you play with the team and Jake Kelly, who's the most one-dimensional player ever, but all of a sudden he's playing down back, then on the wing and up forward. Mm. Like, and you're costing the team. Like, mm. and, and this yeah. is, end of the day, these decisions have huge ramifications and they have for the second half of the year. Yeah. And that's when it's really showed. Yeah. And for me, that's really, really, really cost us. Mm. It is cost us. Yeah, because I think like the start of the season, you know, and he 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 said it himself, like he said, Oh, you know, I have to I have to learn this team, I have to figure it out, I have mm. to see what people's strengths and weaknesses yep. are. And at the start, we were incredibly rigid with the team that we selected and the way we went on. Force changes happen and things start to chop and change. But, you know, if you're in an ex- if it's a free hit first year and you're in an experimental year, I don't see why you wouldn't experiment with more people yeah. rather than just continually pushing the same yeah. people in different positions trying yeah, to make exactly. it work. Yeah. Like I'd, I'd rather see a debutant come up, play a couple why, of games. Why, why and wasn't Voss to- brought in early on? No idea. It's like he hasn't. Hasn't had the form. He'll finish the season with like low 30s goals in the mm. VFL, which isn't bad, but it's not fantastic. Mm. But he started the season kicking bags. He of was on fire. Four, five, mm. and three for the first four or five weeks. Mm. And we were crying out for that when, you know, we didn't have right. Mm. And he's an aggressive forward. Like he's not going to be a key forward AFL level, but he's going to be aggressive. And he's, you know, Jack Darling's size. So At least give him an opportunity. Give yeah. him a crack. And now, you know, we've just wasted – 
another like Nick Bryan is a prime example. Mm. Nick yeah. Bryan should have played 15 games mm. in the AFL this year. Mm. And you can't tell me with this whole this whole idea that we're, you know, all for the future and we're not about this year, but we're about building for the future. How have we built for the future playing Nick Bryan for three games this year or four games yeah. and then dropping him again. Well, it's, I think it's so it's seven games. Four of the seven he was subbed, subbed out. out. Yeah, I think the the issue is with persisting with you know let's say Phillips and, and Kelly in this scenario is like you know, okay so we persist with senior players because they're bringing an element of calm and an element of leadership, but that's not what those players are doing. No. You know, if if you're persisting with someone and that's the reason because they yeah. really hold the line and maybe they're not having great games, that kind of makes sense. Yeah. But we're turning to them for leadership and they're failing that challenge. Mm. So we may as well have some youthful exuberance in there yeah. instead of that. Yeah. And they these are not like these are yes, older senior players. Like they're senior because they're older, but they're mm. not, you know, 200 game champions no. of the club or anything like that. So like yeah, don't get me wrong. Like, Flip gives his all and all of that. Yeah. That's great. But mm. for even him, for, you know, significant portions of this year, he was seriously underperforming and he was just picked week yeah. in, week out, and yeah. it cost us. Yeah. And he's retiring now. So yeah. he'll yeah. get his he'll get his send-off game and, and that'll be it. But, yeah, I don't know. It's just... It's just frustrating. It is. It's just it's just a really frustrating year because yeah, we did a lot of things right, and then a game like this just kills all the confidence. As one of those games, everything can go wrong. Yeah, like um, mate of mine, uh, Duck, who does the Purple Rain podcast, Fremantle podcast, he told me he was chatting to Chris Main, who used to play for Free on Collingwood, and Maine was saying how sometimes you just play these games and. Things go wrong in that first five minutes, and it just and it, it, it like it just snowballs, and it, everything goes wrong, and you just can't stop it. Mm. And we've always we've had times yeah. throughout this season where we have Sometimes. quarters like that, and we can't stop it. Yeah, and this was just one of those times where we literally couldn't stop it for an entire game. And yep. and like I was trying, I was kind of go back to it, and I was like, I was from like, like who actually had like had a crack? Yeah, I think to the first Zero. half. Maybe Nick Hine had a crack because he's probably playing for his career at the moment. Yeah. After that, like I don't think anyone. No. Did. Yeah, I there were so Hyde many bad good. efforts. The, the in the midfield was embarrassed. Woeful, yeah. They were embarrassed. Yeah. The, the senior midfielders pathetic. in particular, yeah. like just the, pathetic. The contest, like the contested ball numbers for their guys compared to us. They like, they they kicked 106 points from turnovers. It's it's wild. That's 106 crazy. points yeah. from turnovers. That's crazy. That sums it up. Yeah. Like that is re that's really it. And yeah. when you got, I mean, I think obviously Heppel started off the year really poorly. We all knew that. Mm. Came back a fair bit. Turned it around. He's done. Yep. He's done really well as far as the particularly his overhead work and contested marking. I think in the second mm -hmm. half of the year. But by God, that guy cannot hit a target. Mm. His kicking is close to the worst I've ever seen, and it's all it's all from. A standing start. It's yeah. not under pressure. It's when he's taken a mark, he yeah. has time to go back, and then he turns it over. So can I – so that game is – this game it. in particular, we're talking about turnovers, particularly mm. a lot of them coming up defensive half. Mm. Heppel, yep. McGrath, um, Laverde, Kelly, for instance, who were down there, yep. I mean, BCT. But even that, like who the, are those guys can actually kick? Well, here's the thing. They've all got their weaknesses. Let's, let's go back to round one. Who played in defense round one? Ridley. Ridley. No, who played in defense round one? Oh, He's kicked 50 Langford, goals. Langford, yeah. Yeah. Why did Langford play there? Because they knew yeah. that we ha didn't have enough talent to kick the ball yeah. out of the back 50. They knew that we had deficiencies there. That's why they tried to play Langford there because Langford's a good kick. Yep. We clearly need to so, keep him forward. And so, and so doesn't that go back to our yeah. drafting and our, yeah, how yeah. we've developed players? One, it goes back to drafting. Mm. Two, it goes back to selection because we saw we saw for one game that Kane Baldwin is a very good kick yeah, and takes yeah. the game on. He's got deficiencies, but he takes the game on. Mm. And in a game like that where we are literally just oh. kicking it back to them relentlessly, yeah. no, not, having, him, not having anyone in that back 50 who's a, who can be steady and calm yep. and make a good decision, Instead, yep. we've got guys who can have some good games, but all have glaring weaknesses with ball in hand. Yep. And, you know. Just, but just going through our side, like our <laughs> – looking at this <laughs> side <laughs> on paper, there's – it's so few and far between that are a good kick. Like mm. we got Guelphie subbed off. Laverde can't kick. Cox can't kick. Kelly certainly can't I kick. I think Cox can kick. No, nah, he, he's just. He takes a long time. Does these ten, he's very slow. ten meter stab passes? He's very, these days. he's very slow. Yeah. But I think he's an okay kick. Nick Martin can kick. Yep. Menzi, don't know. Paco's unbelievable. <laughs> Zerk Thatcher, 
dog shit, Sardis can't kick. Does a, um, yeah, up in the air. He's Redman improved. Can. He's yeah. improved. Langford can. Langford can. Perkins can sometimes. Draper absolutely cannot. Heppel cannot. Phillips cannot. Caldwell's decent. Hobbs has been good. Hind, Merritt. Parish, fuck no. Andy <laughs> McGrath, absolutely Terrible. fuck no. Yeah. Worst pick one of all time. And that's the Gee, team. You so. are you are in a roll tonight. Um, yeah, it's pretty, Honestly, pretty like, poor. fucking I, I, picking I, up I, another I, fucking I, flanker with pick one. Yeah. Just, I was looking at the draft guide. So I was looking at the draft guide the other day. Um, I can't remember the name of the kid. And no disrespect to him. I'm sure he's good, good on him. Maybe it was a good career. But there's in the top 10, or maybe it's like top 15, there's a kid who's an inside mid who's 170 centimetres oh, that's counted the top 10. And Goddard. I was looking at it and I was like, that's if us. we pick this kid up, like, yep. no, like, don't disrespect to the guy, but it's just, oh my God, if we pick him up. The way, the way, <laughs> the, the best football that Andy McGrath ever played was in his first season mm. as a lockdown defender when he, you know, did things like shut down Eddie Betts when Eddie Betts was clearly the best small in the game. And then we tried to make him an inside midfielder as 179 centimetres when we had two blokes who were 180 and 181 yeah. in our midfield and we just pick up picked up Sheil and Smith as well. And we were playing him over Parrish at the time. Parrish was playing as the forward flanker, if you recall. Yeah. So, yeah, just another example of an absolute failure, an abject failure to develop a player. I'd, I'd want um, – what I would be interested in – for the club, if we are going to do a really big cycle of like players and, and cut maybe a lot of the senior dead weight, is like I'd really like a you know you know how Brizzy went and got Birchall and Hodge and I, I don't know if that sort of thing's available, but like a couple of premiership players that have been around for a while that have maybe passed it, but like mm. can just be leaders. We did that once, it didn't work out very well. Who did we do it with? Chappy. That oh, was me. Yeah. Kelly was Chapman our best was player. Sick. Yeah, yeah Kelly, Kelly was, was really good. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that was great. Yeah. I want him yeah. back. But yeah, like, look, I'm, I'm, look, I'm some not leadership. A, I'm look, I'm not opposed to it with the right person. I don't know. Maybe who we that could get Luke is. Parker. Oh god, <laughs> god. Oh, uh, that would actually like it's already the end of me. But yeah. fuck, I would absolutely mm. burn my membership after that. Yeah, it's it's just hanging by a thread at the moment. Yeah, look, it's gonna be really interesting and. But, you know, a game like this, if you're Mason Redmond, you must be going, gee, what have I done? And if you're Darcy Parrish, you're going, hmm, so, uh, I think I'm going. Yep. Yeah. Hope so. After a result like that, I definitely feel like he's going to leave. Maybe, maybe we get Libba. That'd be sick. Libba would be awesome. Good party. Get him on the pod. Can't, him he doesn't talk, but yeah. Him and Paco would be so Reunited. <laughs> yeah. After all these years. I actually, I actually hung around and watched, just like watched the players weirdly after um we got belted again by the dogs and it was Paco and Libba in the middle together. I was like, <laughs> I just wish. Yeah, we can make that work. That. <laughs> that convo would be so good. So simple. Yeah. 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 yeah just not a lot going on. Not a lot going on. Um, Question for you guys before we... Go to some hot takes because, oh, my God. Oh, boy. There's a lot going on there. Mm. Why have we been so poor since the buy? What is what is the reason for that? Because I I would say that we've played two good games post buy, which was the Crows game and the Port game that we well, we were leading at the time the siren went and then we lost. Mm-hmm. But then we played it to an okay game against Sydney, but there were clearly issues. Yep. And then every other game is in a bad game. I would put. I would do you have rank an that out. I don't know. Why do Why do you, Why no, do you think? Because we've heard excuses, think, but why do you think? I I think our team is really unbalanced since the buy. I think we've had some key key personnel come back, and I think that's forced our hand as far as positional changes go. Mm. And I think our selection has been completely flawed, as we discussed earlier tonight, and I've yeah. discussed for the past six weeks. And I think. Realistically, I think those those little small things can really undo a side, and mm. they they absolutely have in our circumstances. And if you look at guys like the footy that Caldwell was playing, which is easily career best footy, Hobbsy, um, you know Archie was getting a different role, and you know he's still getting a crack in the middle, but he was getting a serious crack. Mm. Um, and then you know we brought back some guys, and as you say, we've pushed. You know, Martin and Durham aren't playing on the wings anymore. Not as much as they were. No. Durham, yeah, Durham's not at all. What's the thing? Um, like, we yeah. like on on the balance. Like, you look at some of the players we have, particularly our midfield group. We have a stack of guys who are basically the same style of player. Yeah, Caldwell, Parish, 
Hobbs and probably even Sardis as well are just that's their on baller, feed me the ball, get off the ground type players. Mm. And we don't have like many role players. Like Perkins can obviously play as a half forward. Yep. Then we've got the guys who play in the wings. Merritt has shown that he can sometimes go to half forward if we need him yep. to. But yep. we kind of really lack those role players who who, who play those get roles that, yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm not going to get high disposals, but, but Jim and make them worthwhile. But, but I th- and we're just pushing but I think, midfielders out. Yeah, yeah. I th- and that, that's kind of – that's exactly my point about the selection, Rob, and you've kind of said it a lot more eloquently than I have tonight. But – um, we have these role players who, you know, who need to play that role. And it might be a small forward like a tipper instead of someone like Alwyn Davy Jr., who has been nowhere near ready for me this year, yet has continued to be selected off without actually justifying it with his form in the VFL. So there's guys like Tipper who would actually add to the side. When you when you put in a guy like Nick Cox who doesn't, you know, he's a bit of an in-between player at the moment because he doesn't play key position, but he's 200 plus centimetres mm. and he doesn't actually really command, you know, a, a spot in the side mm. and he's kind of floating between a wing and loose on half back and then kind of playing on someone. When we've got Kane Baldwin to play on Jesse Hogan, mm-hmm. Like perfect matchup. That could have been all right. Absolutely mm. perfect matchup. Or, you know, Jake Kelly who's all of a sudden playing on a, on a flank, a forward flank when like we've had no forward pressure for the last six weeks. We've yeah. got Tipper sitting in the twos. We've got Tipper. Like if you're going to play Text ADJ. Anyone. Yeah. Or put, put ADJ yeah. in a forward pocket with Tipper. Yeah. Or Menzi or whoever's mm. fit. Yeah. yeah. Like you, you, need, you need the extremes as mm. in – you know, you need your tools to actually be tools and aggressive and bring the ball down mm. for those smalls, those attacking smalls to actually, mm. you know, feed off that and get off the packs and then chase players on the other way. Like mm. it it doesn't work if you've just got a bunch of blokes and you're like, okay, I reckon he's all right and, you know, on whatever bizarre idea of merit that Brad Scott has in his head, on merit, I'm going to play Jake Kelly over someone who is actually Plays that in position. that position. Yeah. yeah, that's killed us. It has killed us. Yeah, and I think I think as a collective, and I've heard this about uh, this Essendon group and past Essendon groups over the probably the last four or five years, where people have said to me that there is a lack of players who are defensively minded players and like getting dirty and like mm. actually defending. Yeah. We have a lot of players who love kicking a goal and they love pushing forward and they love a celebration and all that kind of stuff. But when it comes down to being dirty and hard yep. nose and doing the stuff that actually ma- no, gets you to finals and wins you finals, yep. there aren't a lot of them. No. Or they're just and not that good. Yeah. Yeah. And the, But then the, their confidence, like we have someone who they show glimpses of it, like Redmond, right? Redman, when he's up and about, is that sort of player. But then he puts in a performance like he did on the weekend. Yeah. Like that mark he dropped in the first quarter. Yeah, um, just... go, but he 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 loves those sorts of things, you know. Yeah. But it but was like, also the, the thing start? about that for me was his follow-up work. Like yeah. he just jogged yeah. after that. And I mean so like a slow on? jog. Like he didn't try. Sorry, when I've seen players make a mistake like that, mm. they're, you know, absolutely hell-bent on rectifying it by the defensive act. Yeah. And that's typically what you see. But, like, when you see some of our efforts and even, like, someone like BZT who has had an absolutely fantastic year, but his efforts on Hogan on the weekend, he just let Hogan run past him a number of times when Hogan was getting the ball up the ground. Like, he just didn't – he didn't run with him. And it's just – like, he's a key defender. It's all you do. You just stick on your man. We're tanking. Was that was that this, was that just the biggest tank ever? Oh, yeah, it was a big one. If it was, probably didn't need to tank that hard. No, do, do you know what? Tank, tank I remember um, to halve your membership base. I yeah. remember a couple of years ago, um, maybe three years ago, I start I started seeing photos from like end of season, and it was like heaps of them was like. Redman and Ridley and McGrath and BZT and all these people like hang out overseas and they all look like they're having the best time. And I'm like, oh, this is awesome. Like they're all mates. Like this is some real camaraderie. That's a great thing to build a team around. But now I'm like, are they all just like, oh, we're coming here to be mates? Are, are, they, are any of them looking each other in the eye and actually like trying to, you know, prove themselves to something and, and tear shreds off each other? I'd or love, are they just a bit too happy? I'd love to know what Zach Merritt said post game because – Again, mm. this is this is the biggest test that he's had this season. Mm. And, you know, last couple of years you'd have Dyson, who is a very positive person. But I would hope 
that Zach Merritt would have said some pretty choice words yeah. post yeah, that and game. I'd like to hope so, yeah. at least. I hope, not that I really care anymore, but I, I hope that this would be <clears throat> that kind of turning point, <clears throat> excuse me, sim- similar to, you know, a Richmond mm. kind of turning point. Like, mm. by no means do I think we're ever going to win a flag because <laughs> we're not. <laughs> but maybe it can spur something on in the players and maybe it can be that thing that just gets merit you know, grabbing a few guys by the scruff of the neck and dragging them along with him mm. yep. and saying, you're either in or you're out. Fuck off. Yep. Yeah. Let's uh, let's get to some hot takes. Um, apologies to anyone who doesn't get played because I was inundated, <laughs> as you can imagine, inundated uh, with the amount of stuff that we sent through. I'm thinking maybe what I might do, um, if you're a premium listener, I might just stitch them all together in one long file maybe yep. a bit of backing track um and we'll just i'll just run it for like 15 20 minutes on the premium feed for people to listen to so maybe i'll do that but we'll we'll go through some now yeah yeah that's i l- like that idea you could just sit there with like a box of tissues and just like cry away and listen to everyone using it's a, comforting y- using a box oh yeah speaking of hot takes <laughs> <laughs> watch out for some supercharged zinger content <laughs> <laughs> to come. Yeah. yeah. 126 point loss was what tipped me over the edge, you know. Everyone yeah. everyone during the week, like you asked everyone on Thursday and you're like, what's the, you know, what sort of state do you have to be in to do that on a Monday? That's the sort of state you have to be in. Loss. Yeah. yeah. Joel, Joel's the most hated person on Instagram after I put that video out. So all of all, what do you mean? All, of, all of all of our listeners who don't work in an office were like, what's wrong with having Yeah, I've got a bit of vitriol. Seriously? Um, you got a bit of hate. Yeah. Fuck, you guys need to, uh, yeah. Right <laughs> now. I also think, like, that you need to also just realize that we're just taking the piss a little bit. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> I'm not serious <laughs> about anything that yeah. I say ever. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Uh, let's get to some hot takes. Um, more. I mean, I don't, I don't need another language warning. Um, let's see if Derek's got the, uh, the fader up. Yep. Fader's up. Cool. All right. Let's get him started. Uh, this first one's from Border Patrol. Thanks. Thank you very much. McGrath. Bin, and then when he's in the bin, put him in another bin, and then when he's in that bin, put him in another bin, and then send him all the way back to Canada to put him in another bin. Bin, 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 bin. Bin. Yeah, absolutely. Been there. (laughs) It's a lot of bin. Yeah, put me in the bin while you're at it. Uh, Just on, just on that, Rob. While while we've got, I was scrolling through Big Footy, and God, they're pretty, uh, pretty brutal on poor old Andy. Yeah. Yeah, he's okay. got some uh, – needs to lose the leadership role, just jogs around 75% of the game. Uh, possibly the worst number one pick ever. Ooh. Wouldn't get wouldn't be uh, getting this level Paddy of McCann hate retired. if he wasn't a top 10 draft pick, let alone pick one. Mm. This would largely, largely be attributed to the fact that he wouldn't be getting a game. <laughs> <laughs> and then my personal favourite, my dislike of him is inching on hate. There we go. Far out. Yeah. 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 They were all from my burners. It would, it would, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> Having a conversation with yourself. <laughs> yeah. Um, uh, it, it'd be a big um it'd be a big statement to trade someone like that for like a fourth rounder. You just like, we'll take whatever you'll give us. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> that's yeah, that that's when someone's toxic, but yeah, I'm not sure if that's the no, case. No. Um all right, Braden from South Australia. Thanks, Braden. Well, this is pretty fucking shit, isn't it, tonight? <laughs> Game's not even over yet. Just thought I'd get in early with a uh, hot take. It's not really much to take from it. It's four minutes left, well over 100 points down. So, uh, yeah, but on the plus side, Collingwood next week will not have the satisfaction of being the ones to kill our finals chances. There's always a positive. But knowing Essendon, We'll probably come out next week and fucking flog them. No, we won't. Either way, <laughs> up the fucking planes. Don's twenty-four. <laughs> Thank you, Braden. That was great. Love that. Uh, we'll keep moving. Whispers yeah. from the West. Honestly, that's actually not a bad result. I know a lot of people will be upset, but. <laughs> You know, it almost guarantees that we'll finish as low as possible, which means we'll get the best possible draft pick, which gives Dodoro an amazing opportunity to recruit a six foot five string bean that'll suffer stress fractures for his whole fucking career (laughs) 
and we'll be in the same fucking loop again. Fuck Essendon. Fuck the Plains. That's exactly We're right. Shit. <laughs> that's the best. That's the best one we've ever had it's up there. Can we send that guy? A fucking, I don't know. He wouldn't want any Essendon shit. So. No. I'll send him the V. He can have, he can have, he can have my half drunk VB that I've got here. No, um, no. All right, let's keep going because there's so many of these to go through, but we can't get through all of them. All right, next one's from Back Matt. On. Next one's from Matt. Thanks, Matt. At the start of the year, I thought we were going to be good, but they tricked me again for the 20th year in a row. It does feel a bit like that. Yeah. You buy in. The false hope <laughs> is. <laughs> So bullshit. Yeah. You just realize it's false hope and stop hoping. Yeah. I'm done. Yeah. I'm All out. All right. Uh, this one's from 22 Courtney Johns played tonight. <laughs> if you can watch the boys walking out onto the ground, hooting, hollering like they're fucking the 96 Chicago Bulls and then serve that shit up and be happy with it, fuck off. We are so shit. My favourite genre of hot take is the kid in the background. Yeah, keep going, what? <laughs> the kid going, Dad, what are you doing? They're my favourites. Absolute favourites. Uh, that's great. All right, this one's from Pooh. Thank you, Pooh. We are poo. Short and sweet. <laughs> I think that yeah. was a little kid. Was that the kid? Yeah, that, that, was, that, that might yeah. have been it's the like, kid. Dad, I'm going to do a hot take too. Yeah, yeah. that might have been the kid. Um, Didn't learn any words off Dad, though. Yeah. Uh, this one's from Louis Sharman. Thanks, Louis. We are fucking shit. <laughs> and please go, Parrish. There we go. Agreed. There we go. Send that now. Uh, right. Let's keep flying through. Next one's from Lavs Gaming. This will be good. Jaden Laverde would be a very brave fucking man to put Fortnite on his story after that shit. <laughs> fucking god if you put that shit on your story again I'm <laughs> yeah I mean you know correl- that correlation and causation but I'll just say since he started doing the Fortnite his form's kind of slipped away uh, next one's from Waldo thank you Waldo hey boys I uh, just want to give a quick shout out to me dad uh, for, you know making me go for the best club in the AFL competition um, known to man today, you know what I'm saying? Um, no, I should really proud, uh, I'm a supporter and, um, proud of what we've done, especially today, um, <laughs> let alone the last 22 years of my life. Especially um, so good. no, I just really appreciate him, uh, steering me in the right direction in life and giving me, you know, forever happiness throughout my lifetime. Mm. And for many years to come, hopefully. So there you go. On on that, so I, I got something. To say I got something. I got something. I got something. <laughs> well, this, this is this is about this is about dads and, and Essendon. So my dad is the reason I go for Essendon, and we don't talk a lot. But he messaged me at seven o'clock on Saturday night, and he's like, "Oh, it'll be interesting to see what the coach says." About a performance like this two weeks from finals. And I said, disgraceful. It's your fault I go for this team. And he didn't reply for like five hours. And I got a text at like 11 o'clock and he said, had a bottle of red to commiserate. Good luck to you. <laughs> <laughs> so thanks, Dad. Yeah. <laughs> thanks, Dad. <laughs> well, yeah, just on that, um, my old man actually goes for Geelong. Yeah. And I made the decision to go for Essendon. Oh. So, yeah. Tough times. Tough times. Um, Dad should I've got have been no stronger. one to blame but myself. He should have forced you. All right, this, is a coward. All right, this one's from Fuck This. For anyone interested in a, a bit of an end-of-season soiree, I'm hosting a uh, end-of-season mushroom risotto party. I've just foraged some mushrooms and <laughs> nothing sus. Should be good. <laughs> See you soon. Yeah, uh, like send it. us an address. Yeah, yeah we'll be I'm there. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, this one's from... Uh, this club can suck my knob. So, <laughs> great names. The great names today. Oh, fucking hell, boys. I thought we would pass the uncompetitive performances. Ah, uh, well, it's always 2024. A long train ride and a long plane home from Spotless after this. Fuck. Oof. 
Jesus. I Good feel, on him for going, I, I feel, guess. I feel sorry for Stop. anyone who went. Yeah. I feel really sorry for anyone who made that yeah. trip. Yeah. Like mm. King and I were joking about it on Thursday about getting a cheap Bonza flight, standing mm. room only, up to Western It's not a Sydney. fun trip. It's grim. Very, 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 very grim. Yeah. Yeah, well, at this stage, I'm not even going to gather around next next year, Rob. And you know that was the best weekend of my life. It was incredible. Yeah. Got to hang out in the hill there with Braden and all the boys in SA. It was good. good time. Fuck, the Scandinavians, mate. <laughs> not bad. Good, good people. It's great, great place. Great yeah, place. Great place. Great but place. tell you what. Surefire way to not be disappointed next year. Mm. Go for whoever's playing Essendon. Yeah. 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 Well, I put a bet on against Essendon and it nearly got up. Unfortunately, one of the, of the 26 goals they kicked, the, the one person I needed to kick a goal didn't kick one. So mm. I was a bit disappointed in that. I've just started putting 100 bucks in the opposition every week. So, yeah. Nice. Fucking, fucking loaded. Going to yeah. buy, buy a new house, I reckon, with was, that. Yeah. Quit working. It's funny you say that because I was actually going to put my try and put my house on it and yeah. then like buy a fucking five bedroom place in like Turak. <laughs> <laughs> Living the dream. Uh, next one is some angry European. We're fucking shit. Short and sweet. Short and mm. sweet. You can't argue with it. Like it's just sound logic. It is sound logic. It is sound logic. We've been fucking shit for a long time. Mm. Long time. Yeah. All right, this one's from Danny. Thanks, and Danny. We will continue to be shit. There is one constant at this club, <laughs> one constant. That is Adrian Dodoro. As long <laughs> as this guy stays, we will be shit. There we go. I think that's actually two constants. Two constants. One is, <laughs> one is being, Adrian Dodoro and the other is being perennially shit. shit. Yes. Exactly. Uh, all right. Uh, this is Peter Wright. Oh, sorry. This is Peter is not right. And then in brackets, Benno. Oops, Wasn't that deplorable? Fucking insipid. Peter runs to the wrong spots. Peter cannot take a mark. He jumps for the ball and it's wrong. Peter chases wrong. <laughs> Peter. <laughs> Leads wrong. Peter points to the kicker in the wrong direction. Peter is the wrong man. Yeah, I mean, look, you can't blame Peter for that game. He has uh, he has struggled this year. Yeah, and, and a lot of look, a, a lot of people have been upset about the way he's played. And I think, look, I, I, I don't think he's been great, mm. but I think considering the injury that he's come off and how good he played last year, I think he can maybe. Cut him a bit of a break. Yeah, I think a lot of it is up the field. Yeah, I agree. I agree. I agree. Uh, we we never, if ever, kick it to advantage. Yeah, no. When we do, he marks it. Yeah, yeah. When mm. we don't, or, or and Langers is just it. so yeah. good that he just it. makes every kick look like it's to his advantage. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, this one's from Hindenburg. <laughs> good. <laughs> <laughs> Tell you what, boys, that banner well and truly got to the players. Oh. No doubt about it. But I think we're going to need more than a funeral. Straight from the first bounce, we just got absolutely fucking flogged. And to think they say this is going to take time. If anything, I think this is going to be 20 more years of absolute fucking horseshit. Yeah. Mm. Just yeah. Got, we just got to be patient, fellas. That's all we need. Is yeah. we just, it's we're just, on a journey. It's on the supporters and you've just got to be... Got to temper your expectations, supporters, because it's you're hard. just being you're being unreasonable. Yeah, oh, there's a couple of good midfielders that are under six foot coming up in this draft. So yeah, yeah. just wait till they get picked. Yeah, they, they just don't know that their midfield is yet because they've never played in the midfield. Yeah, yeah, but we'll force them to play. Yeah, there. that Watto kid is a forward pocket. We'll 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 play him oh, in the yeah. guts. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, this one's from Alex, who is comfortably numb. G'day, gents. I'll paint the picture for you nice and uh, nice and quick. I'm an Aussie currently overseas in the US. I was up at 7 a.m. about to sit and watch the replay of the game and I get a quick call in with the girlfriend back in Australia. Uh, she's a diehard Pies fan. Uh, suffice to say, we revel in each other's misery. And uh, I'm sure she would have had no problem with me watching that loss and being very disappointed, but she rang me up. First thing she said is, Alex, do not watch that fucking game. <laughs> Good I was about a minute and a half in, skipped to the end, and uh, really couldn't believe what I saw. But uh, I guess I've become accustomed to that in my 15 years as an Essendon supporter. Started going for them when I was five, and I have yet to see a finals win in my time as a supporter. Uh, feeling very dark. 
Grim. Very, very dark uh, this uh, this Sunday night. Uh, I'm also fucking sick of Jaden Laverde playing Fortnite. <laughs> I stopped playing that game when I was 19 years old and I'm 23, mate. Grow up. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Uh, yeah, I mean, in, the, in the past, I would have said, you know, just stick with him. Mm, it's hard you know, to it's, now. It's, um, yeah, it's the mark this, of a good supporter to the, stick through, mm, you know, fat and thin. But, but this is the hard thing. Like the, ration, still got time, the, the rational part of me is like, oh, well, it's a new coach and a new era with all the changes he made. And the other part of me is just burdened Mate, by all the shit that we've gone it's through just the, the same last the first, it's the the same first part years. of you is as dumb as dog shit yeah <laughs> because nothing's changing nothing has changed mm. nothing's going to change and we just keep throwing money at this useless insipid club and nothing changes <laughs> nothing changes we get new promises every single year nothing changes yeah another 100 point loss nothing changes i feel i feel bad for the the media people having to put out that thing about them wearing a seatbelt on their jerseys oh. next yeah. time. Like, they probably yeah. organised that months ago. Yeah. Probably organised that months ago, but... Strap in oh. for another belting, fellas. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> You're going to need it. You're going to need it. Yeah. Yeah. Fucking hell. Yeah. They might have to seatbelt me to my seat for many chances staying there for more than five minutes before I hit the bar on Friday night, so... Oh, yeah. We're not we're not watching any of that footy. Yeah. I'm going just to yell at people. Yeah. Mainly, mainly Essendon people, but yeah. Yep. I'm just going to go and get it. I'm right going for Maybe. people to yell at me. Yeah. Like, please. <laughs> oh, yeah. I'm, yeah, like, I, get... I like the punishment. Yeah, yeah, same. That's what I want. Yeah. And I think <laughs> as a collective, I think we're still, as as much as this sucks, I would like to think that we're way above what Carlton supporters were doing in the middle of the year. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. As much as I love to see it. Yes. That's, that's not us. <laughs> yeah. Let's, yeah. We, we don't need to go there. Just do, we, we won't be abusing our players. Yeah. I think just just do what that guy does and put a paper bag on your head with a sign on it. I reckon that's the way to do it. <laughs> yeah. Same old. Yeah. The yeah. same old, you know, Dodoro out, whatever it is that you need to do. Yep. Um, yeah. But yeah, we don't need to, don't need to cross any, cross any lines into that territory. Um, do you reckon we could get Hurdy back somewhere? <laughs> <laughs> you know, the sickest part of like the last, Certainly the last 10 years. Yeah, what's that? was when we had a 150th celebration. We had Hur- Hurdy doing the Undertaker thing. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so fucking sick. Yeah, yeah. and Carlton smashed us. Yeah. What do, you, what, do you, what do you reckon if we Mate, got- It's not about results, all right? Oh, yeah. Sorry. I, what, sorry do you reckon if we, what do you reckon if we got him in on the pod and played him these hot takes and just go, what do you think? <laughs> what do you, how do you think he'd react? <laughs> oh, just incredibly probably. Yeah. <laughs> Um, maybe it's not the su- maybe it's maybe it had nothing to do with the saga. It's just uh, Heard was that good and classy <laughs> that we just can't ever replace him ever, and the club will just never exist without him. Yeah. It's it's the real life Jesus story. <laughs> yeah. We're being made, we're being punished for our sins. Yeah, yeah. I feel like I've been punished enough. Um, I, I don't mean I've, I don't mean real life to offend any. Uh, Catholics out yes. there. I mean, it, of course, it happened and all that shit. Yeah. But, um, <laughs> the, the modern day. Yes. The mm. modern day. Yes, yes. Um, I've got more of these. Do you want to keep going? Yeah. I mean, yeah. Let's do it. We've got a few more. I mean, let's just like, I'll text Paul and tell him we're going to run late. Let's just keep playing this. Um, this is from Isaac, who says, Scotty doesn't know. <laughs> hey, boys. So at the end of the game, uh, <laughs> Scott was sort of talking about how this game really reflects how much work there is to do across all aspects of the club, even like the football department. I'm wondering what you guys think that refers to. Is he maybe talking about Dodoro here or maybe the, the fitness staff who are probably, if, if, if all things are correct, like the way we've sort of faded off towards the end of this year is pretty deplorable. Do you think he's talking about there? Is that a direct shot at the fact that money is heading out the door or maybe a Dodoro thing or is that just a whole sort of grand statement but there it feels like there is something in that yeah yeah yeah, I think uh, like obviously Marnie's part of it, as we know. Um, he's on the way out. Wouldn't be surprised if there are other changes, potentially coaching changes. Wouldn't yep. be surprised if we I saw a new think, senior coach or two. I don't, I don't think it's assistant coach. I don't think it's so. Yeah, I, I wouldn't be surprised if a few of those assistants aren't moved on. But yeah. um, I, I don't think it's so much a crack at anyone in particular or anything like that. I mm. think it's just a, kind of a realistic reflection on where we are as a club and the fact that he's – you know, for all his flaws and everything and the mistakes he's made this year, he has come into a bit of a shit show. Mm-hmm. And yes. our players are remarkably unfit yes. when you compare it to like normal AFL standards. Yep. Mm. Um, 
and it's just not good enough. So I think it's a reflection of obviously he's been, you know, if people kind of recall some of the statements that he made about our, you know, some of our kids like Coxie and Reed and, mm. and all those guys, Jonesy getting injured at the start of the year, midway through the year. And, you know, some of the extreme measures that we took as a club kind of midway through the year mm. to look at, you know, Australian um, cricket um, fitness the, stuff the to try and bowlers. resolve, mm. yeah, to try and mm. resolve the back issues and things mm. like that. I think it's just indicative that it's, it is a much bigger problem than mm. just, yep. you know, yep. a tactical thing from, you know, the tactics of last year or something. Yeah. It's, it, prior I, to yeah. That. I think it's just, and, this is coming back to my whole point about the change since like bar and everything is that there are issues that have existed for probably five plus mm. years yep. more with just the way the club operates, the yep. practices in the football department, from the medicos to tactics to training all the way down yep. and these things have to be rectified and that's what I'm talking about with this balance of me going, all right, we actually are t changing them but I'm impatient as fuck and I'm sick of losing and I want to have success even though I know that like – there are people in there who are trying to fix these problems. Yep. It just, you know, doesn't feel like much is changing when you yeah. have weeks like this. Do, do you, so let's say, fast forward to next preseason. Do we, you, you know how like it takes a couple of preseasons hmm. to build that ability to gut run and fitness. So are we, so we now in a phase of they should be getting flogged every single preseason and we're just probably going to cop maybe a similar thing the next few years? I mean, I, or is I, it yeah, I, I would just hope like particularly like the younger players where this is going to have a lot of effect on, like, you know, you're 25 and unders, I would hope that they are just going to get better at it. And hmm. like this isn't like a revolutionary idea. Like you have to look around the competition to know that, when it comes to crunch time and it comes to finals, most of the time the players who stand up and are playing the best footy are the experienced guys. Yep. Because you've been in the system for five, ten, how many years, your body's up to it, you know, you've been there before, you can get bashed, you've taken this punishment, and we've got a lot of guys who either are young and just aren't up to that standard or have probably been, you know, not training at a standard that other clubs are. Yep. And – as you said with Brad, Brad's come from working in the AFL where he's seen what everyone else is doing. Yeah. And he would roll in and he would speak to, you know, he would him and Vozo and whoever else, Marnie at the time, would speak to, you know, the train department, the medicos and all the things that they're doing. And they go, oh, this is how much we're doing. And he would go, well, I, I know that this club, this club, and this club are doing this. Yeah. So mm -hmm. we should be doing that too. Yeah. And I think that is the change that we are doing, but – it's just hard to be patient and waiting for that to, you know, yep. get the well, results well, I, from I it. think as far as like Marnie goes, it can be only a good thing that we've moved him on because we know obviously the famous – It was a Zav, Zav appointment. So. Mm. The famous pen fiasco in pre-season where he forgot to order all the pens and so, <laughs> you know, the names couldn't be put on the team sheets and <laughs> all of those kinds of things. <laughs> now, I think we can be safe in saying that that won't happen again. Yes. So we do have pens at the club now. We have whiteboard markers. <laughs> mm -hmm. So, oh, thank God. I think that's where everyone's sniffing. Th yeah. <laughs> that's, yep. that's what I'm sniffing. We, <laughs> yep. Big, big glue order <laughs> during the week as well. So, yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. And yeah, apparently some, um, some mushies too. So, um, the boys have got into those, unfortunately. But yeah, we can, we, I think it's safe to say that there, there are pens now. Yeah. At the yeah. Club, <laughs> there, so. are, there are pens at the club. So we yeah. know what we're doing. General manager of football um, has sorted that out. Yeah. yeah. But anyway, yeah. Look. There's plenty of change to happen. Um, I reckon let's just play one more. Um, sorry, everyone who hasn't been played because there's like another 20 that I haven't played here. Um, all right, this is from the Heartbreak Kid. <laughs> just so devastating. The last fortnight, I thought we won a few games. I just... <laughs> and then thought maybe we could do something and then oh, Sweden kicked the second. We were down 2 nil. <laughs> I thought, how could this get any worse? <laughs> so I flicked over to the Bombers game and we're down 105. <laughs> oh, no. Oh, well, at least the EPL's back. Oh, no. He's right. At least the, at least the Premier's back. That is good. That is I, good. I need to find a new sport. Get in the Premier League, bro. Premier League's yeah. mint. Oh, fuck that. No, that's sick. Yeah. Get around Not it. Get around it. Um, have you tried, like, uh, 
going on long slow walks or um yeah, they're not doing it for me maybe I just hate walking slow bird yeah. watching um, chronic masturbation they can fill some time yeah, I've got yeah. <laughs> um that's also pretty disappointing sometimes though yeah. <laughs> you're not feeling like shit after <laughs> so much of the time sailing yeah. it's kind of like having a zinger box at yeah. lunchtime <laughs> yeah it is Big time. sailing yeah. that's sailing rowing yeah no are you, a, are you a solo sport person or a team sport person Oh, well, neither, clearly. Okay. How would you go at mixed netball? I feel like you'd, you'd get really into it. Yeah, I can't. Oh, it's you're not banned. good. You're yeah, banned. I'm banned. <laughs> you're banned from <laughs> they mixed They can't, net- like, use your body at all. <laughs> they, yeah, they it's give a, you funny looks and shit. It's a non-contact sport. Apparently, but, like, you know how some sports are, like, non-contact, but yeah. you still, like, like, basketball is non-contact, but yeah. you still bump people. Bit of jostling. Give a hip and shoulder yeah. and whatever. Yeah. And it's all, you know. Yeah. You can't do that in netball against girls, apparently. No. Hmm. No. Yeah, so maybe like, I don't know, weightlifting or get into fucking, I don't know. Yeah, bodybuilding. 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 Yeah. Body yeah. go, yep. go graze up some fucking shredded guys. <laughs> yeah, that could work. That That'd could work. Yeah. Uh, boys, let's take a break. I hope we've got enough off our chest and that's been cathartic for you all. Um, <laughs> but we'll take a break and we'll come back and chat with our great friend Paul Cousins to uh, talk with the end of the VFL season Yep. Um, with him. So back after this. Welcome back, everybody. It is that time again for what is the last VFL wrap of 2023, and we're very happy to welcome our dear friend Paul Cousins to the show. Hello, Paul. I thought you were going to say it's. you're very glad that it's the last <laughs> VFL wrap. Uh, uh, I'm good, boys. How are you? Uh, uh, seen better days? Yeah, yeah, it's a bit of a head scratcher. <laughs> mm. bit, bit, Shit. I was, yeah. a little, I was a little bit scared to ask, actually, mm. I must admit. We're a bit Pete Murray in here, yeah. so. Yeah. yeah. A bit Pete Murray. Yeah. Seen bit, better days. Yeah, seen better days. A bit, yeah. bit, bit Pete Murray. Yeah. Dog yeah, shit. No, I yeah. like it. Yeah. Uh, yeah, no, I'm probably better than you blokes. I would guess. Mm. So, yeah. Uh, Wouldn't doubt it, Paul. Yeah. We, <laughs> we, we had a win, and um, it, it sucked that it clashed with the – AFL game, but we had a win, so I'm pretty good. There we go. There we go. Uh, so Essendon uh, VFL beat Coburg. I better say COVID. Coburg 100 to 85 uh, on the weekend. Paul, how did you see the game? Oh, it was a good contest. Actually, it was um, unusual to be playing Coburg in Williamstown. We had a um, an unfortunate sort of last minute shift of the game, which um, had to happen. The the when, when the draw was done, we were scheduled to play Sunday afternoon at Windy Hill, um, which would have been a nice way to finish off the season. But then the AFL draw got done and they got scheduled to play on the following Friday night. So um, the club were keen to avoid a, a five-day break for um, any AFL guys who might have played VFL and need to go up next Friday night. So hence why we were moved to the Saturday and the EDFL had finals at Windy Hill Saturday. So uh, we were off to Williamstown. So gotcha. it was a bit of an unusual sort of start to the day uh, in that sense. And playing in the um, home colours in the home rooms down at Willie was unusual, but um, it, it provided a, a sort of nice setting for the last game of the year. And the, the weather thankfully held out at Willie. It was a bit blowy as it always is, but wasn't too bad. The the deck was in good nick, so it was a nice sort of fast end to end game, and um, lots of good contests around the footy and pretty willing. Uh, we got sort of five or six goals up at one point, and Coburg were able to to fight back and um, stay in the contest right till the end, which uh, um, kept it interesting for those watching and um, a bit too interesting for my liking. But we were able to close them out and and finish the season the right way, which was good. Mm. Oh, well, look, hopefully um, moving the game does help because I, I hope there was a few list changes after what happened in the seniors <laughs> um, on the weekend. So maybe, <laughs> maybe it was the right call to do that, but we'll see. I um, I saw uh, Big Stools kicked five, which is uh, pretty awesome for a guy who's had a pretty challenging year. How, how was his game? Oh, he was terrific. He, he looked like the Stools of old. He was ragdolling blokes and hoovering in marks and kicking goals. So he was fantastic. You forget he's absolutely enormous. Still, it's like he's a massive mm. human. And you kind of forget just how big he is until he ragdolls a couple of blokes, uh, as he did the other night. And look, he kicked five. He had a couple of sort of 
unlucky free kicks go against him, which could have been seven or eight in the end. Um, so he had a had a big night, and um, yeah, it was fantastic. And as you said, for a guy who's had such a horrible sort of interrupted year for a number of reasons, um, it was a great way for him to find some form late in the season, and um, certainly probably put his his name up there for AFL selection as well. So no, I was just wrapped for him that he went so well. Do you think he's got another in him, Paul? Another year? Yeah. I oh, know he's contracted. Yeah, he? absolutely. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, no, Do you absolutely. He'll go? I, I, look, he's been horribly unlucky this yeah. year with a couple of sort of niggly soft tissues rather than anything big. Um, and the personal and, side of things um, as well, of course. And, and yeah, and obviously, um, you know, had, had a pretty horrible year personally as well, which. Yeah. Um, probably kept him away from the game for a little while as well. So uh, from what he showed the other night, um, there's still plenty of uh, plenty of life left in him on the field. And he's such a great presence off the field as well. He, he's a, a really good guy, but he, he's a really good leader of the group. And we've probably, um, you know, we've had a really young group much of the year at, at VFL level. So his leadership's been welcomed. And um, yeah, I, I think, Particularly given sort of our list demographic is pretty young, and um, and probably we've been at times crying out for a, a, another key forward option as well. I think so. Uh, I, I think if he'd been healthy through the year, he probably would have played a fair bit of AFL footy. So yeah, um, yeah. So I, I I think for sure he's got another year in him, provided the uh, the body holds up. Absolutely. It's yeah, it's certainly a pretty remarkable performance given all the footy he's missed to to come out like that. But it is great to hear that he's, you know, back and um, you know, using his size, he's got that strength still that he'll never lose. Um and another guy in our forward line who has a bit of size, has a bit of strength, is um young Paddy Voss. How did you see his game on Paul on the weekend, Paul? And and what kind of role was he playing? Uh, he was playing deep forward with Stuz, so we're kind of a two act down there, and um, he was terrific, Bossy. I thought it was, um, you know, one of his better games, certainly in the second half of the year. And he was commanding. He, he took several sort of strong grabs. He was really strong in the contest. He um, was happy to throw the weight around and went in to sort of defend a young teammate of, and and look after him and did all those things that you want a bloke with his size and aggression to do whilst um, whilst not losing his head, you know, and um, that, that controlled aggression I think is something that Vossi's been striving for through the year and uh, I, I thought he he did that really well on the weekend. He, he kicked a couple of goals. He could have had a couple more. He had a couple of sort of just miss. It was a pretty uh, – I mentioned the conditions were okay. It was pretty blowy. Mm. Um, it was a pretty tough sort of um, night to kick goals and – he had a couple um, of free kicks against him, similar to Stu's, didn't he? He, he did, yeah. yeah. He had a couple that that um, too strong might have them. sort of, yeah, <laughs> might have gone either way or, or been no calls, and yeah, unfortunately went against him. But um, and as I said, had a couple of sort of difficult set shots, just miss as well. So I think he only kicked two in the end, but um, it, it was probably a better game than that. Reads, uh, mm. I thought he played really well. Now, Paul, uh, with the VFL season wrapping up, we thought we'd ask you some more general questions about the whole year and get your opinion on that. And I'll, I'll, I'll start with a nice challenging one for you. Uh, in your eyes, who do you think is going to win the VFL best and fairest this year? I'm assuming you don't vote on it, so you're allowed to have an opinion. <laughs> I don't, and I am. Uh, so <laughs> I, I, my guess is... Um, that a couple of guys will will go close. Um, Nick Bryan will be one. I think he'll go close again. I know he, he won a couple of years ago. Um, I think he's had another Crazy. really consistent year. He's um, he's played. He's gone up a few times. I know and missed some games, but um, the games that he's played, he's consistently played extremely well in, and will will poll really well in. I should say, including on on Saturday where I thought he was terrific for us. Um, and another AFL listed guy who I think is, will go well is Kane Baldwin. Um, I think he's been 
in my opinion, I'm probably biased, but I reckon he's been the best key defender in the VFL, in the comp, certainly that I've seen this year. Um, yep. I think he's been fantastic. He's, I know he's gone up as well and played some games, got carried over on the weekend, so he didn't play at either level, but um, and had a game or two as a forward as well with us. But I think when he um, played key back, he was um, sensational. You know, he was pretty much every time I reckon that he played key back this year or near enough to, he was in our best for me. So, um, yeah, I, I think um, those two guys will go really well from a from an AFL-listed point of view. Um, and, and then there'll be some strong performance from the VFL list as well. Billy Cooney, the captain, I think has had a, a really good um, second half of the year in particular. He's probably got a bit more on-ball time in the second half of the year after playing forward a bit in the first half and has been terrific. I think Joel Fitzgerald is another one who his last sort of six or eight weeks in particular have been sensational to the point where I actually think he's a, he's a live chance to um, to get picked up by someone in the off-season on the AFL list. He's got great size about him, fantastic set of hands, intercepts really well and, um, and is probably, to be honest, there's a lot worse footballers on AFL lists right now than him, I reckon. He's, um, yeah, we he's got a, a real chance to, to get a look. <laughs> I wouldn't say that. Uh, <laughs> and... Uh, um, while I'm on that sort of um, key, oh, sorry, third back sort of intercept role, um, Rat Montgomery has also had a terrific year and will yeah. well as well. Yeah, that's I'm sure there are others who I've left out, but um, yeah, there's some key guys who I would think will go pretty well. And how have you seen um, the years? I know like Wang Wang is he's he's just recently been injured, hasn't he, Paul? A couple of weeks ago. Um, yeah, yeah, he hurt his foot again up in Southport. I think. Yeah. How have you seen overall, have you seen that, you know, that, that kind of year from um, some of those younger kids? Yeah, I think he's developed well, Tex. Um, uh, it's, you know, with some of these guys, and I've mentioned it a few times when we've talked about Tex, but he just hadn't played a whole lot of footy yeah, for COVID. varying reasons. Um, yeah, through COVID and um, he's had some injury issues. He missed the entire preseason with us pretty much. And, um, you know, so it was probably behind the eight ball for the first half of the year, which which limited him a bit. But from sort of halfway through the year or so, he's been, you know, he's been able to build up that fitness base. He played quite a lot of um, on-ball time, which he probably hasn't done before um, at that level anyway. So that was new for him, but... Uh, he had some really impressive games around the footy and while well, still maintaining that sort of real X factor that a, that a uh, you know, a dedicated small forward has as well. So um, he was able to probably add a few strings to the bow. And um, yeah, I think he developed really well. So he, it's a shame that he, he got hurt again late because he was having a really good sort of, latter part of the year he kicked four and a quarter up in Southport I think before he yeah. hurt his foot so yeah um you know he might have might have been sort of pushing up for for senior selection again so it was a shame for him that he got hurt when he did but um yeah he I, I think he had a had a strong year um of sort of moving forward and um hopefully another one next year but mm. Did you want me to talk about a few of the other guys as well? I was I was thinking um, ADJ D- Davy Junior in particular. How you know he played obviously played a little bit of senior footy, but um, also had a fair stint in in the VFL as well. So yeah, I was quite interested in how you saw his year. Actually, really similar to Tex, to be honest, in a lot of ways, um, and not just because they're both father sons as well, which probably also adds to the similarities, but. Um, they're both, neither of them have played a whole heap of footy. Um, Alan played, I probably played the first, what, six or eight? Up, yeah, yeah. I would mm, guess. Yeah. Um, both Xavier before boys. Before he came down, uh, sorry. Both but, Xavier uh, boys. Xavier boys, yeah, of course. Um, yeah, before he came down to us, um, it, it was very much playing that dedicated small forward role um, in, in the AFL, but again, like Tex, he went into quite a bit of midfield time when he came down to us um, and, and was able to, to sort of work on his craft around the contest, which I think is what the coaches were 
were, you know, I think that was the reasoning behind playing him on ball was to really work on that sort of contest element of his game. And I think he took some good strides there. And and then a bit like Tex later in the year, probably, um, you know, went back to a bit more forward time and was able to impact that way. So um, he, he set up a couple of goals for us the other night as well as spending quite a bit of time around the middle and had a really good game. So again, I think a pretty strong development year for a kid in his first year of footy. You know, I think they'd be um, the club would be pretty happy with with what they were able to get out of of Alwyn uh, from a development point of view. Um, so yeah, that's good. And I, I guess you know the other young guys. I've spoken before with your show about um, Lewis Hayes, who I, I think has um, had a really good year um, of development as well. I think he was. Obviously, you know, skinny and pretty raw when he came in and, and um, you know, the, the bigger guys obviously take a fair bit longer to grow into their bodies usually and um, that was probably the case a little bit with him early but I think he, he's developed really well. I think he's had a really strong sort of back half of the year and um, the other one who I'd say has developed really well in that sense is is uh, sort of under the radar is Lordy. I think um, he's... Um, Sort of not many people talk about him, and he's um, he's small and quick, and he's probably blends in a little bit. But um, I actually think his back half of the year has been terrific for us. I think he's really taken some good steps forward, and um, uh, you know I'm not sure sort of where his future's at as far as contracts and whatever else. But I think he's shown plenty in the second half of the year, including the other night where I thought he was one of our better players. So really good signs from a few of those few of those young guys coming through. Yeah, awesome. And and you've obviously mentioned one person already, but are there any other VFL listed players that you think have maybe put their hand up for an AFL contract? Oh, I think um, yeah, I, I think Fitz has probably been the standout in that sense. Um, as I said, I think Billy Cootie's had a terrific second half of the year in particular, and yeah, you know, he was captain of the twenty one, so he's obviously in the two kid and. Um, or 20, he might not, might not even be 21, actually. And I know he captain Western Jets as well and, um, you know, was really high, highly thought of there. He probably is just a guy who had a few injuries at the wrong time, um, sort of later in his top age year, and then his first year out with us was pretty much ruined by injury. So, um, yeah, I, I think he's come on really well. He's a he's a um, inside mid, really finds it well at the coalface, uses it well when he gets it. So. Um, he's certainly one who who clubs would have a close eye on as well, I would think. And um, and then a, a few of the sort of you know Sam Conforti had another strong year with us before he finished up a bit early. But um, uh, you know he's another young guy who who I think has um, has shown plenty over a couple of years with us, and he's still only sort of twenty one as well. So um, yeah, look, I'm I'm sure there are others who I'm forgetting, and I'll kick myself when I get off. But those guys have, have certainly. Um, put their names up and recruiters will be uh, keeping close eye on them, I would think. And uh, a last one, Paul, what uh, what improvements or changes would you like to see uh, for next season for Essen VFL and, you know, the VFL competition as a whole? I think um, from our point of view, I think it's really important that we, we've been a really young VFL list, a really young VFL group for the last couple of years. So, we don't want to waste that development that we put into those guys. So I think it's really important that we keep, you know, a good portion of the of the young VFL guys who have, who have really come on in the last year or so together. I talk about Billy Cootie and um, Joel Fitzgerald and these sort of guys. I mean, these are these are nineteen and twenty and twenty one year old kids who have really been the backbone of our VFL list for a couple of years now. So um, I think it's really important that. Um, that, that we keep, you know, that, that group together and, and then obviously add to it as well. I mean, we, we're under no illusions that, you know, we, we haven't had a great year. And so it's, it's obviously important that we are, are super competitive. So that, that means we need to continue to add talent. But it's also really important that we consolidate the young talent that we've got and not, as I said, sort of not spend a couple of years or a year on these guys and then, lose them to another mm. sort of program. So yeah. that's obviously very important for us. As far as the, the VFL itself goes, uh, I, I don't want to complain too much, but 
four four buys in an eighteen round season and with twenty one teams just doesn't work for me. I, I I hate it. You know, so I, I I don't know what the solution is. Whether we need to sort of break into conferences or um, you know whether um, there's an opportunity to to maybe have a, a couple less buys and and um, play a couple more teams. I mean, you, mm. you sort of play an entire season where you don't play teams, which seems crazy to me, but um, it's not easy for them to work out, particularly to work around the AFL when they have their buys. And so then, I, you know, AFL line clubs have to have buys the same weeks that their AFL clubs do. And so, it, it, look, it's all messy and difficult and I'm not trying to pot anyone, but... Um, yeah, having sort of four buys in an eighteen round season is um, not yeah, ideal. It's, it's ridiculous, kind mm. of. Yeah, you just kind of feel like you get going, and then you have mm. two buys in a month. And, mm. Mm. Um, what What about yeah. if um if our VFL side plays in the AFL instead of our <laughs> AFL side? <laughs> <laughs> I'm not answering any questions for you. <laughs> <laughs> you're just, you're just going to get me in trouble. Yeah. Any questions for you tonight. That's a good one. Uh, right? <laughs> so, but, but you're, you're persona non grata. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, no, so, yeah, I think that's important. You know, I think we need to sort it out. Like, it's a great competition. It's an incredibly high-quality competition. There's great people in it. Um, and, and those of us who are in it really buy in and, and invest. And so it, it just needs to feel like more of a real competition, yeah, you know, yeah. and, and I think um, playing a few more teams, having a few less buys and, um, you know, it is ultimately what I would like to see, but, you know, you can't always get what you want, as Mr. Aggie used to say. Exactly. Paul, absolutely brilliant with your time, and we've loved having you on the program for another season of mm. VFL Don's footy, another season of The Sash, and uh, we're very lucky to have you on uh, every Monday to uh, tell us all about the VFL. Always a pleasure, boys. I love that you um, talk about the VFL and promote it, and I know I get a lot of feedback from people who say that they listen in just to get their bit of a um, – no, they're listening to your show to listen to your show, but they love getting a bit of a, <laughs> oh. bit of a VFL fix as yeah. well. Um, and, you know, from our point of view, anyone who's willing to promote the VFL is good in my book. So you blokes are legends. So I love it. And, um, yeah, I appreciate you having me on. Give you the red hot, Paul. We're not here for the AFL. <laughs> <laughs> I told you, mate. I'm not talking to you. <laughs> uh, Paul, uh, brilliant as ever. We'll touch base soon. Thanks, Paul. Um, and, yeah, have a good off season and until next time. No worries, boys. Enjoy the uh, last game. Hopefully mm. it goes well. And, uh, yeah, we'll, we better catch up for a beer over summer. Definitely. Cheers. Absolutely, Paul. Sounds good. 100%. Thanks, lads. There we go, boys. Yeah. Paul Cousins for the last time in 2023. I'm going to miss him. Yep. Yeah. I mean, I might just get him on for a chat during the off-season. Maybe just a bit of one-on-one. Yeah. Get on a call, talk a bit of footy, which is good always idea. good. Um, but yeah, love what Paul brings to the show. Makes the show. Does a great job. I think a lot of people just skip the first hour of us and then just listen to Paul. So. <laughs> I don't think anyone listens to us. Well, I'm not. <laughs> yeah. I really hope not tonight. <laughs> Definitely not tonight, yeah. <laughs> they shouldn't. Yeah, the scissors will be out tonight yeah. on tonight's show, but I'll leave it with that. Yeah, a bit of trouble. Boys, any final thoughts from you guys before we go? I feel like we've got a lot of our plate. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Got a lot of got a lot out there. Um, final thoughts. Uh I'm going to enjoy going to the footy and not watching any footy on Friday night. I yep. feel like that this will that kind of feels like the wake to me. Yeah. Friday night against Collingwood, you know, yeah. we'll just we'll just have some beers and like reminisce on the well not on the good times, mm. but we'll reminisce on times that we've had. Yeah. Mm. Listen to those like um oh god, what was that song like everyone used to play it at like it's like the like there's like the shit graduation song. Like, uh, we will still yeah. be <laughs> yeah that fans forever. Yeah, I'll listen to that on Friday. <laughs> That's what Andy McGrath <laughs> listens to to pump himself up for a game, I reckon. <laughs> In yeah, the rooms blah, blah, beforehand. Blah, blah. Final Parting thoughts. shot. Final um, thoughts. Yeah. Uh, final thoughts. Um, stick your journey up your fucking ass, Essendon. Um, <laughs> Yeah, I'd I'd like to see some players go out and actually have a crack on Friday night. Mm. 
Um, unfortunately, I have absolutely no confidence that they will against a decent side like Collingwood. Uh, it'd be good to end on a yeah on a good note for the season, but mm. yeah, realistically, we don't do that, and it's not going to happen. So mm. yeah, yep. Um, Another year gone. Yeah, Thank, thanks for nothing. Well, look, we're all pretty flat. Um, oh, yeah. You know, even though we had a funeral a few weeks ago, it is it is it is done now. Yep. It is we've, done. We've gone through the what stage of grief are we? We're now is it acceptance? Yeah, yeah. I think we've, we've I think I'm back at anger. Back at anger. <laughs> yeah. yeah. There was yeah, definitely denial there himself. for a couple of weeks. There were a few people in my DMs who were denying denying the death, but uh, no, no, yeah. it's, it was it was there. It happened. Um yeah, I guess uh look, you know, it's a pretty flat note as we come to the end of the season. Um as Myrtle alluded to earlier, as much as we are all pissed off um we don't need to go into any carlton fan areas with abuse to no. players no we're better than that abuse your friends abuse us if you see yeah. me you can abuse me i'm fucking fr- belt the shit out of me yeah exactly Put if you me see, out of my misery if you see me abuse him but yeah let, leave leave the players alone um at least uh at the game and in public as we've seen with a few other incidents over the mm. past week which are pretty horrific mm. um but anyway listeners Thank you very much, as always, for listening to the show. Um, last preview pod for the season on Thursday. Going to be some interesting areas there. Um, I don't even know who's on it or what we're going to talk about, but we'll make it fun nonetheless. And then it'll be silly season and we'll um, start talking trades and drafts and we'll get ourselves excited again for a long summer of hyping yeah. ourselves up. Oof. So it's going to be. We uh, trade in like a completely different club. Maybe we'll just do that. Like maybe even a new sport. Yeah, mm. yeah. This will be a this will be a hockey podcast next year. Um. <laughs> anyway, thanks, listeners. Love we'll you get all. Around ice hockey. Go planes. Planes. Go Canucks. Go Canucks. Bye. 